Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look and recapping the final of the Women's World Championship happening in Utica, USA. So I'll bring today with the scores from today's games, starting off with the bronze medal game between Czechia and Finland. Now this was a game highlighted by once again the goaltending. We've seen it time after time in this tournament. Goaltenders can have the ability to change the game and this game was no different. We have a game going to shootout. Ahola for the Finns was absolutely incredible. Kept Finland in the game long enough for them to make it to a shootout. Sure enough, you can tell who won by the score on the left, right side, whatever side it is. 3-2 to victory for Finland over Czechia in this one. Shootout win. And it was just another game where, when we look at it, it was back and forth. It was exactly what you're looking for between these two teams. Remember back to the first game of the day. Uh, the, their first game of the tournament, which was between Finland and Czechia. And this game was dominated by the Czechs. And it never really looked all that good until at the end of the day, you know, Finland put a little bit of a fight up towards the end. But it was the worst we've seen Finland in a long time. Sure enough, throughout this entire tournament, we talked about it in yesterday's video, previewing this game, that Finland has gotten better and better and better. Czechs have gotten worse and worse and worse. So this result did not surprise me at all. But it really goes to show, you know, how much women's hockey has come that in a span of a week a team can go from getting absolutely smoked dominated to all of a sudden being a, a team that wins the bronze medal and I think that's really really impressive to see and it really is one of the things I sort of enjoy of covering the women's tournament is that you never really know who's going to be that next team to sort of pop out of nowhere it's a very it's a tournament really dominated by the goaltenders and whenever you get a hot goalie we saw it with Germany with Abstrider who's just you know if you get a hot goaltender at the right time it's going to last you a long time and you're going to have some really key wins. Think about the one over Sweden. They were this close to beating the Czechs and unfortunately they just couldn't beat Switzerland in that placement game. But we've seen it time after time. It's one of the things I love about this tournament is one hot goaltender can get you a long way. So that was the first game between Finland and Czechs. 3-2 to two is your final in a shootout for Finland. And now let's talk about the big one. Canada is your 2024 Women's World Championship gold medalist. And it is oh so glad to be back for Canadian fans. Of course, you know, we lost last year on our home turf. This one's sort of a little bit of a retribution punch back in, you know, in the U.S. What's better than beating a team in their own barn? We've seen that a number of times from the Canadian players who all said the same thing. We just want to beat them in their, in their own barn. And sure enough, that's what they did today. Six to five victory. High scoring affair. Back and forth. I was on the edge of my seat. I wish I had one of those pedometers on me the amount of times I was walking around. Because to be honest, I can't sit still during these games because they're just so, you know, they're going to go, they're going to they're gonna do this, that, that. And it's just so exciting. And I really enjoy these games because at the end of the day, it really comes down to who's going to score that next goal. And sure enough, it happened a bunch of different times today. It was Canada, then it was the U.S. getting that extra one, Canada. And it was just a hectic, hectic game. But it was a really, really exciting game. A great game from both teams. Sertanaki with the golden goal this year. Of course, there's been a whole bunch of sort of game winners over the past couple of years with Canada. But this one, you know, it, it was one of those games where it was just you're on the edge of your seat the entire time. You knew it was going to be a high scoring game just the way the two teams were playing. But man, the one game that wasn't a, sort of determined by the goaltending, of course, it had to be the gold medal game between Canada and the U.S. What's better than that? Canada is your 2024 Women's World Championship gold medalist. And now we'll take a look at the news, starting off with 2025 is our year for the Czechs. Of course, they're going to be hosted next year. So we'll see, you know, are they going to be able to perform on home ice? We've seen, you know, the U.S. do their thing. We'll see if, you know, the Czechs can sort of bounce off their own crowd, if their crowd sort of gets them riled up. The U.S. really used their crowd in this tournament. We've seen it, you know, throughout all the games. It's the first time in a while we've seen sort of a packed barn across the entire tournament. So hats off to Utica once again for sort of filling up the barn. It's It was an incredible tournament to watch. And it was really impressive to see, you know, it, it's been... It's been a, a really progressive couple of years for women's hockey. It's been really impressive to see sort of as this tournament's progressed, just the amount of viewership. I'm sure the TSN numbers are going to be rolling in shortly, but I have no doubt that, you know, the numbers are going to be a lot better than they were from previous years. And I always love to see that. Move on to the second one here with Aho of Performance. I'll let you try and figure out that one. That's going to be my anagram of the day. 
But once again, Ajoa stood on her head for the Finns and really dominated play. And that's what we've seen throughout this tournament. It's one hot goaltender at the right time. She made a kick save on the back of her heel. It was just an, it was just one of those games where, you know, she was in it to win it. And she ended up putting the team on her back, carrying Finland to the bronze medal. First one for them since I believe it was 2020. So really, really impressive for her as well as on home soiled for the U.S. Unfortunately for them, couldn't quite pull off the victory against Canada on their home turf. For Canada, they're a big-time party wrecker in this one. Oh, those Canadians. I don't know. I'm trying to be my American self right now. But it was unfortunate for them, you know, for the Americans, that they can't, couldn't win on their home soil. Sort of retribution for the previous year where Canada lost on their home soil. So, you know, I guess we're even now. Let's see, what, let's see who takes it next year, whether we're trying to both trying to beat out the Czechs. The Czechs were really impressed with this year. I was really impressed with them. But now let's get to the thank you section of this video. So I want to thank you all for watching, number one, and for supporting the channel, especially through this tournament. It's been really impressive to see. I always like to look back at, at sort of previous tournaments. Last year, I wasn't able to cover the tournament, unfortunately but the last two years before that was one of those where I really enjoyed doing it you know but unfortunately the viewership wasn't quite there but now we see it you know it's almost doubled what we had before and it's really impressive to see so I want to thank you all every time you like it gets it out to more people every time you comment it always puts a smile on my face to get to talk to you guys so I want to say a big thank you from me to you for not only supporting the channel but watching for sharing all of that and, and even talking to us on Twitter we just started a Twitter page um, which is sort of a fun little thing for this tournament we're going to keep it going, of course, for future IIIHF tournaments. So if, you ever, if you ever have any questions for the question period or any sort of that, be sure to follow us on Twitter there. But I do just want to say one big thank you from me to you for supporting the channel throughout this entire tournament, as well as just in general. But I really do appreciate the support there. Moving along here to the final playoff bracket. You can sort of see it there with Canada winning gold today, the U.S. in second with silver, Finland in third place with the bronze. Unfortunately for the Czechs, not meddling at this tournament. And I will look now at the final rankings. So remember, this is the big one, right? When we look at it, we sort of talked about it a little bit off the top. And it was about the Olympics. We'll get to that in just a second here. But we'll take a look at it. Remember, the top five stay in Group A. The next three go to Group B next year. And lastly, the bottom two teams are relegated. So that first five is Canada, U.S., Finland, Czechs, and Switzerland. So those five teams will be in Group A. We'll show that in just a second here. As well as Germany in sixth, Sweden in seventh, and Japan in eighth. So those three teams will be in the next year's tournament in Group B. As well, the bottom two teams, the two relegated teams in this tournament are China and Denmark. So unfortunately for them, they will be kicked out of the tournament for next year. We'll have two Division 1A teams coming up, the winner and the and the silver. And we'll show that in this graphic right now with 2025 Women's World Championship Group A. We have Canada, U.S., Czech, Switzerland, and Finland. And lastly, the Women's World Championship Group B is Germany, Sweden, Japan, and the, the, the winner and runner-up of the Division 1A gold and silver tournaments. And we'll flip it right over now to the Olympics. So we talked about it off the top. The winners, basically you're looking for that top sort of six teams to, in order to make that Olympic, the automatic qualifiers. That's what a lot of teams are playing for at this tournament. So the automatic qualifiers in Group A, so that top group are Canada, US, Czechia, Switzerland, and Finland. As well, the Group B team that's automatically in is Italy because they, they since they hosted the Olympics, they automatically make it into the tournament. As well... Russia is a questionable team. They may or may not be into the Olympic hockey. It just depends on what their political situation is, whether the IHF allows them in. If not, it becomes Japan. And if you want to see it, there's a full graphic on Nick, the IHF fans page. He's really, really good with the IHF stuff. So if you haven't already, make sure to follow him on Twitter. He, he's, he's one of those guys that you can really sort of trust with the information. I bounce a lot of stuff off him. So be sure to follow him on Twitter. He's a really, really impressive sort of follow. Make sure to do all that. He covers everything from even to the Division 1A stuff, which I won't be covering. So if you want to see which teams are sort of getting going to get promoted, that's what you should watch for and make sure to follow them on Twitter for that. Well, now we'll jump to good old fashioned question period, everyone's favorite game show. But today we have one question and we'll sort of comment whatever you want to do it with Astrid, who says, I would, I would have liked to see a sudden death OT for the bronze medal game. And it's one of those things. I think we all would. It's just unfortunate that every single game ends up getting decided by a shootout, especially with some of the big games, right? When we see it, it's a medal game. In my opinion, if you want to do the semifinals, fine, I'll take that. But it's, since it's a bronze medal game, it's for an actual medal. 
you got to be allowed to play the game the proper way for the full overtime and onwards. In my opinion, you know, the one way they could do it, and I saw someone comment a little bit earlier too, and this seems to be sort of the general consensus is that they can't do it because there's a gold medal game coming right after. And sure, you know, that is true. But at the end of the day, if you're going to be able to, if you're going to have the scheduling power, don't put the games within an hour of each other. Make the games 7 o'clock, make the games at 1 o'clock or 3 o'clock, just to space the games out, because you know the games are going to go long at the end of the day. You know, it's a tournament in a, in a bronze and gold medal game. That's going to be a tight checking game. Overtime is likely, we've seen it time after time in these tournaments, every single you know, metal game seems to go into overtime or a shootout or some sort of prolonged game. So when we see it like that, you know, you just have to make sure that you're going to give the players enough time to put their best foot forward, to play the game the right way. Even if it's 20 minute overtimes, I'd take that. Just make sure it's sudden death for their whole, you know, if they need a second overtime, let them play a second overtime. That's my plea to the double IHF on this tournament. Unfortunately, it was decided by a shootout. I think everyone's starting to get a little bit sick and tired of watching big, big games be decided by shootouts. But that's just my complaint and Astrid's complaint. So be sure to let us know down in the comments what you think. And lastly here, we're going to sort of end it off with a little poll to you guys. You can find this poll in our community tab. And we're just going to sort of see what do you want to see next? Obviously, this will sort of def uh, decide what we're going to be covering. You know, whether that be the IIHF uh, U18 men's, the NHL playoffs are coming around the corner. So if you want to see previews for that, or if you want to see something completely different, let's take a look at the early Olympics or early Four Nations Cup. Let me know which one you want to see in that poll. And if you have anything else you want to see, you can either drop a comment on this video or drop a comment on the actual poll. But with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you like to drop a like, if you really like it, you're subscribing, tell all your friends to comment down below your thoughts on the Women's World Championship 2024. Until next time, see you.